This season on Joe Rogan Questions Everything. All my life, I've been fascinated by bizarre subjects. Chemtrails, UFOs, Bigfoot. We're going to go deep, deep, deep into all these crazy subjects. Dude. I am going to look at everything with a totally objective, open mind. You do not have pieces of a UFO. You don't have an alien head. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to correct you. Dude. Are you worried about engineered diseases? Will we all be in the Matrix? I will do everything it takes to investigate these bizarre subjects. We're on a trail here, but if we turn towards where we went in, we're gone. I'm sure there's people in towers that are watching our action here. Let's get out of here. What exactly is that doing? Weird. I'm going to talk to scientists. We could affect earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. That's turning the Earth into a weapon. Should I be terrified? Absolutely. Wow. I want to talk to experts. How scary is a pandemic virus? You're going to have a huge death toll. And people that are just crazy. My meter's going off the charts here with this. That's not evidence of anybody spraying anything. I think the debate is over. What is going on? Do you think we're on the verge of achieving immortality? Where is the thing that you can bring to science and say, explain this, bitch? Will you be a fully developed human one day? Don't ask so many questions. Oh, man, you're messing with my head. This is what I've been looking forward to my whole life. Tonight, I'm going after my own personal obsession. Bigfoot. It bumps my left shoulder, and it continues to walk past. Is Bigfoot real? What is he? My first thought was, gorilla? It's Bigfoot. A human hybrid? We're dealing with something that's every bit as intelligent as we are ourselves. Or possibly Stone Age descendant of man that retreated into the woods. How come nobody's getting any pictures of these things? Now this is awesome. We're going deep into the trees. Could have been a person that did this. But why would they in the middle of a swamp? To tell you that Bigfoot did it? I'm going to put the experts to the test. We got it hit with infrasound. This is bizarre. And take a hard look at the evidence. What do you think its diet is? Anything it wants. My meter's going off the charts here with this. We've sent you some samples. We actually got DNA. We're about to go squatching. Anything could be out here. If Bigfoot is out there. The hell is that? Oh, my God. I want to be the one who finds him. Dude. Why is this Bigfoot thing so compelling? Why am I so interested in this? And why isn't it just a completely ridiculous idea? Well, for one reason, because they're constantly finding new hominids and new ape species all the time. Like the Hobbit Man, a little tiny three foot tall man-like creature that lived alongside humans as recently as 13,000 years ago. There's also a thing called Gigantopithecus, and this is where it gets really weird. They believe that this animal was bipedal, meaning it stood on two legs. Eight to 10 foot tall, enormous ape creature. A real live Sasquatch that lived as recently as 100,000 years ago. Does that mean there's really a Sasquatch? Not necessarily, but it makes it interesting. Lots of people claim to have seen Bigfoot, but many of them are kind of sketchy characters. Dr. Matthew Johnson is not. He's a very reputable man, he's a child psychologist, and his story is quite compelling. You might be noticing my sweet fanny pack. You gotta have very open hands if you're dealing with squatches. You gotta be ready to wrestle yourself out of a tough situation. You don't wanna be stuck carrying your keys. How did you get involved in this? Were you always a believer? I was not always a believer. In July 1st, 2000, we decided to take the kids on the Big Tree Loop Trail, and we're up the mountain about a mile. We're walking through very thick trees and brush, and all of a sudden, downwind comes this putrid stench. And we're hearing this deep bass mammal, whoa, whoa. And then I hike up the slope, probably about 60 feet away from the wife and kids. And all of a sudden, I see movement out of the left corner of my eye. I turn in, I look, and that's when I saw Bigfoot. I hit the trail, I run up to my family, and I go, 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 let's move, now. Move. At that moment in time, um, these very strong protective instincts kicked in. You know, that's my family. That experience was so deeply seared into my brain that every time I bring it up, I still feel what I felt then. 
I can only imagine how weird it would be to have that memory and to try to explain it to people without it sounding completely crazy. You are of the, the mind that this is not a gigantopithecus. You know, if you look on a continuum of human being in ape or gorilla, I would put the Sasquatches somewhere in the two-thirds range. This is a human hybrid. If Dr. Johnson is right and Bigfoot is a human-animal hybrid, that is a major twist. Johnson grabbed his fiance and took me to his Bigfoot habituation area, which is basically his backyard. I used to do aggressive research. We used night vision equipment, deer cams, seismic sensors, and never got anything with that. And people kept saying, you know, you need to do habituation. So I thought, you know what? Leave the high-tech equipment at home. Come out here and just hang out. It's about midnight, so it's pitch dark out here. So we're sitting here, and within 30 minutes, you can hear them coming in. And then I start talking to my calm psychologist voice. We're here to be your friends. We're here to get to know you. We're the ones that have left food for you. No sooner than I said that, this path right here, one of them started walking right up toward us. And it spins me around like I'm a little kid as it continues to walk past back through that area. So you saw all this? Yes. What was it like? When it hit Matt's shoulder, I was just sitting there with my mouth hanging open. I could not believe that. You know, that. <laughs> I still can't believe it. How come nobody's getting any pictures of these things? Then? If they're that close to people, it just seems like the odds are that a camera trap or something no. would catch one. They're very elusive. That's the point. What's really weird to me is this idea amongst Bigfoot believers that a Sasquatch can sense cameras and recording devices and avoid them. I mean, if this thing really is an animal, like a chimp or a gorilla, it's hard to believe that it's that clever unless it's some sort of human hybrid. I need some science. I'm gonna meet with a man named Dr. Jeff Meldrum. He is a PhD in anthropology, and he also is an expert in human movement. I invited Dr. Meldrum to come talk to Duncan and me on one of my podcasts. Check, 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 we good? check. Tell me when we're ready. Anytime. Dr. Meldrum, thank you very much for coming here and talking to us about all things Squatch. Duncan and I are uh, yeah. very excited about this. Sure. I remember when I was a kid mm -hmm. and being so convinced and excited that there was a big hairy man living in the woods. <laughs> what is it about Bigfoot that speaks to man? I, there, there are different levels. I mean, there's the just simply the mystery, something that's undiscovered, uh, unresolved. Uh, I think there's an added mystique because it's so human-like. Here's something you said that unfortunately disturbs oh, me. Okay. And that is, you talked about the Patterson footage as if it wasn't <laughs> BS. The Patterson Bigfoot footage is essentially the holy grail of Sasquatch evidence. What they claim is that what you're seeing is a female Bigfoot walking across a riverbed. Patterson footage, to me, it looks like a dude in a monkey suit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even see what's going on. This is all blurry. It doesn't look real to me. That thing does not walk like a gorilla. It walks like somebody who's late for a meeting. But what about Bob Hieronymus, <laughs> the guy who says that he was in the suit, and well, the guy who, when he walks, looks like Bigfoot? Well, he doesn't, actually. One interesting thing. No, he doesn't look anything like it. His limb mm. proportions are completely off. I've seen chimps walk on two legs. I've seen gorillas. I've seen primates move. They yeah. move differently than people do. This feels like an <laughs> pretending to be Bigfoot. That similarity is largely due to the fact that this is another biped that uses a mode of locomotion that's very similar, but not identical to our own. It walks with a slightly bent ankle, knee, and hip. And so instead of the head bobbing along like we walk, um, it's smooth. smooth. Exactly. So to my eye, that confirms the credibility rather than refutes it. Really? Yeah. So now we've talked to two intelligent people that believe in Bigfoot, Dr. Meldrum and Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson also believes Bigfoot may be a hybrid, and there's a doctor who agrees with him that also has scientific evidence to back up that claim. I'm gonna meet with a Dr. David Swenson. He has a PhD in oncology, he's a genetics expert, and he has published over 39 papers. He's gone over some of the new genetic evidence that's been published, and he firmly believes that Bigfoot is a real animal. 
Based on your analysis of the DNA, what is your conclusion? There is an unknown animal that appears to be some kind of a hybrid between a human and something else. Coming up, is it possible that Bigfoot has a human mother? I don't think you can fake all that DNA. And later, oh my God, gathering up evidence and getting deep into the woods in search of Bigfoot. Dude! <laughs> I'm talking to Dr. David Swenson about the latest Bigfoot DNA study, and we're going deep down the rabbit hole. Based on your analysis of the DNA, what is your conclusion? There is an unknown animal that appears to be some kind of a hybrid between a human and something else. Really? Yes. Some sort of unknown animal got it on with a human female, and she gave birth to a Bigfoot thousands of years ago? What? For someone like me who's not educated in genetics, explain what you found. Well, I uh, took a look at the data on chromosome 11. And what's interesting is I did indeed find large regions that don't match up with anything. The claim was is that this has a uh, human uh, mother at some point in history. The problem with this whole study is nobody believes in Sasquatch. Anyone who would work on it is a quack, and that is not necessarily true. New things are found every day. You are obviously a man of science. You're trained in this. What's so intoxicating about it to you? DNA sequencing. That that's was what, what it took. That's what caught me, because up, yeah. up to that point, it was a myth and a hoax. It's nuts, it's crazy talk, a bunch of crazy people with hoaxes. You read this DNA sequencing and you're like, oh my goodness, this is a real animal. Could be a real animal. Could be a real animal. Yes. How do you think it could be fake? I don't think you can fake all that DNA. But uh, as a scientist, I want the damn thing to bite my fingers off before I'm going to believe it. I'm with you. Fascinating talking to Dr. Swenson, and fascinating that a man of his credentials actually believes it might be possible that a Sasquatch is a real animal. But it also started to get me thinking. They have more than 100 samples of Bigfoot DNA in that study. What if I could collect some Bigfoot DNA of my own? And that's where Tom Powell comes in. He's a science teacher in Portland, Oregon. He's got one of the most extensive collections of Bigfoot evidence in the country, and he's gonna let us analyze some of it. One of the things about Portland, Oregon, and the Pacific Northwest in general, that's kind of amazing is, look back behind us. See that, that woods? You can't see through that. The woods and the trees and the greenery are so dense that if there was some kind of a weird animal that was very elusive, that's where I would want to hide. So Tom Powell has been studying Bigfoot, and he is a believer. And we're going to meet him, and we're going to find out whether or not he's right. Tom. Go. How are you, sir? Good to see you, man. What do you got here for me, buddy? Got all kinds of stuff. Where do we begin? As a scientist, why do you think that this is all anybody ever gets, these imprints of this mm -hmm. thing? It just seems that there's a lot of hunters in this area. There's a lot of camera traps that people set up on game trails. Why have none of these things caught a Bigfoot? We're dealing with a creature that is much smarter than what most people realize. It's more closely related to a human. We're dealing with something that's very intelligent, every bit as intelligent as we are ourselves. Let's look at some of the physical evidence I have in the room. There probably is evidence already in hand that is better than what we're likely to go out and get in the woods. You're 100% convinced, right? You're not like pretty sure that there's, not, there's an animal. I would, I would call myself 95% sure. There are people who are obsessed with the concept of Sasquatch. Frankly, I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, Casts all around, pictures of Bigfoot on your walls. It's There's a some hobby. people that are it's obsessed by Sasquatch. For me, it's a hobby. I collect evidence because it's forced me to reevaluate my own scientific dogma. So, what can you tell me about these prints? This one seems to show dermal ridges. So, if you look at this heel right there, you see fingerprint like swirls mm. that are thought to be difficult or maybe impossible to fake. 
Yeah, that's pretty interesting. If these dermal ridges are fake, it means whoever faked them has a deep knowledge of the anatomy of the foot. So I'm gonna put these dermal ridges into the very interesting pile. If a person's going to fake a trackway like this, they would make one set of tracks and they would tromp around in the ground. So this, this is, is a fake track. Whoa. What do you think its diet is, if you had to guess? Anything it wants. Maybe we should look at the scat that I've been given, and we can see what the scat tells us about their diet. This way. This one, I think, is the most compelling of all. If there was one and only one that I would have tested, this is it. It certainly tells us a lot about this creature's diet, and that is it's eating what is, I think, deer hair. See little hairs mm. sticking. What makes you think that that would be a Sasquatch scat as opposed to a bear scat? These cylindrical logs. That's something that, that really is more human in terms of the scat. We're done that with looks that. good to the hair. This one was found on a fence. And the person felt that the creature that left it stepped over the fence and, and left it on the barbed wire. So um, we'll do tests on this stuff and try to figure out what it is. And we should be able to get a pretty concrete answer. I do think that the evidence for the existence of a group of creatures is much stronger than most people realize. It was great talking to Mr. Powell, and I thank him very much for the Bigfoot poop. If it turns out to be real, I'm gonna be a happy man. I'm sending hair and scat samples to Dr. Todd Disotel, a primatologist at NYU, to see what he has to say. But physical evidence isn't the only thing that we think we have from Bigfoot. We're about to talk to a guy that claims that he has something even more interesting in a form of evidence, audio evidence. His name is R. Scott Nelson, and he's a cryptolinguist. He worked for the US Navy for over 18 years, and he has heard recordings of Sasquatch that he believes, due to his expertise, indicate a real, undiscovered language. A big monkey that lives in the woods and talks for real. You are a voice cryptolinguist. Cryptolinguists are trained in the, uh, the techniques of uh, the recovery of human voice on tape. How did you get involved in distinguishing Bigfoot sounds? My son, he says, Dad, what do you think uh, a Bigfoot sounds like? So I said, well, let's, let's Google it and find out. And they had these samplings. And immediately, I knew three things. It was not a human being. They were speaking in a complex language. And number three, that they were not fake. That had to be a very strange moment for you. Changed my whole paradigm. Where is this sound coming from? What is this recording? Where this particular one was uh, recorded in 1972 on the top of the Sierra uh, Nevadas. What about these sounds makes you believe that they are really Bigfoot and not a hoax? I had been trained in deceptive practices of voice manipulation. These tapes had none of that. Play us some of what you heard that, that freaked you out. You hear the snarls and the growls? I'm... Coming up, I just have to tell you, my meter's going off the charts here with this. And later. Dude. Oh, my god. What the hell is that? Wow. Dude. I'm with R. Scott Nelson, a language expert, and he thinks that some of the recordings attributed to Bigfoot are not only real, but that Bigfoot is speaking in a very complex language, much like humans do. Play us some of what you heard that, that freaked you out. You hear the snarls and the growls in between the articulations of that? Yeah. Giggle, whoop me, watch food, plain food. Say it, play it again. This is very clearly a complex language. It play. sounds very similar to like chimpanzee chatter. <laughs> Chimps going crazy. <laughs> right, you know, like except really until you cage. slow it down, and chimpanzee you cannot say, giggle, whoop me, watch food, plain food. They don't have the ability to, to articulate those sounds. What I'm going to play here, this is, this is the Sasquatch, right? Okay. Over here is a human being trying to mimic the Sasquatch. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's a human. See, that's the human trying to mimic. I just have to tell you, my 
Meter's going off the charts here with this. You're saying that that sound could not be made by a human? No. I just did it. There you go. That sounds like a bad kung fu movie. You can even hear the kung fu sounds. You hear that? That's a kung fu movie. That's a kung fu movie someone's playing in the woods. Nope. No? Let me play you something that will convince you. Oh, good luck. <laughs> See right there. That's the language. Well, that, that definitely sounds more like an animal. There's no animal on the face of the earth that can say nagibash. Like, how can you attribute both of those sounds to the same animal? They're wildly different. Well, whether they're the same animal or not, they both have language. Some of that Bigfoot language sounded ridiculously fake, but some of it sounded really freaky and weird. And we're talking to a guy like R. Scott Nelson, a crypto-linguist who really understands language, and he's convinced they're actually saying something. It makes you think. OK. All right, guys, here we go. You ready? The world that we see today, we pretty much have a good account of what's alive in almost every place. Absolutely. But the idea of an intelligent, ape-like, human-like thing, that's where people won't budge. If they came out and said, we found an intelligent ape-like being living in its own civilization, that would make news forever. We're putting up a bunch of links and evidence all about the Squatch on sci-fi.com. OK. Why is the idea of seeing Bigfoot one of the most exciting things? If you said to me, Joe, would you rather be able to fly or actually meet Bigfoot? Wow. I would say I'll take Bigfoot because I've got some questions. I want to know if it's real. You know what Bigfoot's going to say to you? What? He's going to say, why didn't you fly? <laughs> Pick flying. Pick flying. Duncan, there's only one way to solve this problem. Will you go to the woods with me and go squatching? No. No, I'm sorry. Why would I deny? Yeah, Please. of course I'll go. It's a dream come true. I'd love to go squatch. All right, let's go squatch. Let's do it. Let's do this. Getting out into the woods to hunt for Bigfoot is a childhood dream of mine come true. Are you kidding me? This is going to be awesome. So I'm going to go with Duncan and head up to Washington State. Our first stop is a general store in Greenwater, Washington for supplies. But up in these parts, you never know who you're going to run into. Like this woman, Barbara. She works at the general store, and she is no stranger when it comes to Bigfoot. I've been having experiences here for years. I just never realized that's what it was until I actually saw it. You didn't know that they were Bigfoot? Well, there was so many times over the years that it, things would happen. You know, I'd hear strange sounds and rocks being thrown at us. And I just never made the connection until I actually saw one. And then it was light bulbs went off, you know? What do they sound like? Well, the screams sound like a siren. Can you do an impression of it? Oh, and then it stops. That's creepy. You should hear the talking. The talking is what's creepy. But what does the talking sound like? It's a, a deep, guttural chattering. When I heard Barbara make those sounds, it sounds exactly like the sounds that I heard when talking to R. Scott Nelson. <laughs> It definitely sounds like they're talking about the same kind of creature. But why no photographs? Why no good because video? Because people just aren't prepared when they're out there. When it happens, it's just like that. By the time you get your camera on and rolling, it's gone. They're like ninjas. Kind of, yeah, the ninjas of the forest, yes. <laughs> Monkey ninjas. Monkey ninjas. <laughs> wow. So now that we've got our supplies, we're heading for the woods. But being out here is bringing back some memories for Duncan. I did encounter a strange creature that I can't explain. And uh, I, I was walking through the woods and came out onto this lake. And I saw this, like, duck. But it wasn't a duck. It seemed too big. Its, its neck seemed too long. And it was looking at me in this really like, evil way. Was it a goose? It could have been a goose. <laughs> 
So now we're about to meet Steve and John, two members of the Washington Sasquatch Research Team. Gentlemen. And Pierce County, where we're going, is the number one county in the nation for Bigfoot sightings. And these guys are the experts in squatching. They've offered to let us stay with them at one of their Bigfoot hot spots in the woods. If there's a squatch out there, I want to be the guy who finds him. Steve Joe. Wilkins. Nice, nice to meet you, Steve. Steve. John Shannon. Nice to meet you, John. What's the most impressive thing that you've ever seen out here? We were out wood knocking, and uh, the purpose of a wood knock, and we think they use it to communicate, or maybe it's a mating call. But what a call. crude way to have a mating call. You knock on yeah. a tree with and a And here's stick. a couple of pink monkeys oh, pounding on a tree. <laughs> He's pissed, and he zaps these guys with infrasound, essentially, and it comes from the guttural sound in his chest and it causes fear, anxiety, nausea. It's like wading into the surf. It's just like waves hitting you, and all the hair on your body goes like like that. It's for the folks at home trying to pay attention, squatching, wood knocking, and infrasound. All right, let's do this, Chuck. Great to meet you. We'll see you down there. We'll see you down there. Thank you. Follow us. Crossing our fingers. Coming up. Anything could be out here. Oh, my god. How was that? Dude! We're in the forest of the Pacific Northwest. It's not only beautiful, but it's like walking into another world, a world where a big, hairy, eight-foot hominid might live. It's so moist out here, it's crazy. This is nuts. I've heard a lot of accounts, and I've spoken with a lot of people, but now I'm going to go into the woods and look for Sasquatch myself. Let's go check this out. This is the road, how we got in here. And just to give you an idea of how incredibly dense these woods are, we're just going to go walk in in real time so you can kind of get a grip on this. <clears throat> One of the only reasons why an animal of this size that they're talking about could possibly be out here. It's just some of the densest wilderness in the United States. We're on a trail here, but if we stop, like right here, and turn towards where we went in, we're gone. We don't, we don't even know where we are. And you could be 100 yards away watching people from the trees, and you would never allow them to get close enough to get to you. I mean, this is insane, dense forest. I certainly don't think that anyone has a real accurate account of what's going on in the entirety of these woods. Duncan and I would be lost out here by ourselves, but luckily we have Steve and John from the Washington Sasquatch Research Team to guide us through. We were thinking we'd take you to our gifting stone. Let's go, let's go check let's it out. It. Okay, now I'm excited. We're already in Bigfoot's backyard and we're about to get deeper into the woods. Look at this. Ah, to the gifting stump. Here's a gifting stump. So you leave this stuff as a kind of gift offering to see if Bigfoot takes anything? Yep. Dude, it's been moved. Review. You see the pink on the little ball toy is facing the point of oh, yeah. this rock, and now it's facing that rock. Totally right, it's moved. Just about every time we come out, he'll change something. I gotta be honest, I thought the gifting stump was kind of dumb. Just because there's some stuff that gets moved that's sitting on a log, there's a lot of animals out there. Very easily something could have bumped into that. Why do you leave stuff like rocks and sticks? Why not, um, like, uh, food or, or? Well, food will be eaten by rodents. Right. If you put down a piece of chicken extra crispy, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some more interesting evidences of Bigfoot in the woods. You'll see saplings broke off at six feet high, snap. When they're angry, they'll snap them. Let's go look at that. All right. See, that's not cut. Right. It's broken. That's a pretty difficult thing to snap. That's a fat yeah. piece of wood. And it's not that big, so the wind didn't do it. This is kind of interesting. To try to do that, to try to grab a hold of it's it a human. and pull on it, I mean, how would you do that? You'd yeah. have to be way up here. With You'd your, have to with grab your... it way up here. Yeah, but if I grabbed that and I told you to break that, if no, that was a full train, I, I told you to that. break that. Forget it. It would bend. That's got to be really hard to do. Steve and John are pointing out what they believe is evidence that Bigfoot was here. That's the teepee structure. See the structure. teepee structure here? It looks like it could easily have been naturally falling branches, not naturally fallen branches. Ah, wow. Yeah, this was definitely picked up 
Yeah, it's suspended. It's not touching the ground. It does look like something tried to make it. If somebody really made that teepee tree thing to try to fake Bigfoot evidence, that's quite an undertaking. It could have been a person that did this. But why would they in the middle of a swamp? To and tell you that Bigfoot did it? Yeah, possibly. But who picked this up and brought it over here? See the bottom of this? Yeah, that's Where's the Where's the root swamp? ball from that? There is no root below it. And in fact, is the root of this tree below it, not this. Correct. And it's floating. That means somebody wedged it in there. This is amazing. That was not something that was created by nature. So either someone did it to try to fake some Bigfoot evidence, or that was actually done by a Sasquatch. Now, if somebody actually did it to fake evidence, that's quite an undertaking. It doesn't mean that they didn't do it, but it does make it pretty interesting. This is bizarre. Broken branches and stumps are one thing, but I'm not sure if they're gonna help us find Bigfoot. It's a good thing that Steve and John use some modern technology too. We set up recording devices and camera traps all around the camp. We're also using time-lapse cameras too. Uh, this takes a picture every five seconds from sunrise to sunset. What's I the weirdest thing you ever took a picture with? A blob squatch. A what? A blob squatch. That's a blurry squatch. It's a blurry Bigfoot. Yeah, that's wild. Let's find a good look angle. Oh, yeah. That just went flat into the ground. Yeah. From almost all accounts, Bigfoot appears to be nocturnal. You rarely, if ever, see him during the day. So with night falling, we're going to go into night ops and break out the night vision and the thermal cameras. It's time to get into the woods and do some serious squatching. Oh, this is rad. I'm recording uh, thermal. Hold on, do a real quick sweep. Bigfoot cannot hide from a thermal imaging camera, right. unless he's behind a tree. These are some deep woods, you know? Anything could be out here. Do you guys do calls? Can you call out to one? Well, we don't, we don't do calls, we do knocks. Some squatchers believe wood knocking is basically Morse code for Bigfoot. Want to do some knocks now? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Let's do some knocking. We're out deeper than we've gone the whole time. You're scaring it off, Duncan. That hurt? Nah. They think Bigfoots whack big, solid trees with sticks in order to communicate with each other. Some even think it may be a Bigfoot booty call. I can watch the thermal if anything shakes in the tree line. Yeah, hopefully, after we do some knocks, something will come running. Wow. That's crazy. This looks like a good fur here. A good Doug fur will echo really loud. Yeah, I'll just mosey on up there. Yeah. And wait for response. Hear that? Snap. Thinking this won't be a bad spot to set up. We're gonna go up and plant the audio recorder. You think we're gonna find them? I think if there's ever a chance that we're gonna find something, it's right now. Steve's scanning the area, using his uh, thermal. If there's any squatch out there, they're behind a tree and they're gonna be peeking. Doing the ninja move on you. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna nail it again, Mojo. Okay, go ahead. Okay, here goes nothing. This is crazy. I thought I heard something. Because if they're out there, you'll see a little bit of a thermal. Whoa, what the hell is that? See that? This is wild, man. Hey, John. What is this? Dude. See that? Oh, my god. What the hell is that? Oh, there it is. Oh, look, 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 look. Dude. I'm gonna check out this heat signature. You're gonna die, dude. This is it. See it on the tree? 
Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. See that? What the hell is that? It's my thermal. Oh, that's I mean, your... my uh, recorder. That's his recorder with still heat to it. Oh, my God. You have to pay these guys to delete that scene. Dude. Dude. It was a long night. We spent about three more hours looking for Sasquatch. But in the end, we decided to pack it in. And hopefully, our mics and cameras picked up something that we didn't. Yesterday was pretty cool. We didn't get to see a Bigfoot, but some of the things that Steve and John showed us were pretty interesting, like the teepee of trees. We're going to get the audio mic real quick. All right, see this morning, we're, we're going to check the mics and the cameras that we set up to see if we got anything squatchy. Well, here's our recorder. How much would you freak out if it was an obviously non-human voice saying, you're never going to catch me, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> never going to catch me, Samurai bitch. chatter. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So we got the recording. Do you know if it picked up anything? Well, it records everything. All right, so we'll head back. What do you got, brother? This is the data that we pulled off John's Sony recorder. And what we'd like to look for is spikes in the waveform to tell us something was making a noise, whether it's a, an owl or an animal of any sort. And we keep doing that until we find something interesting, like right here. That's us knocking. That would be a wood knock. So that's you guys knocking wood. That's probably not us there. What is that? We still us? Nothing. So let's take a look at the still camera images. The camera's set up to take a picture every five seconds during daylight hours only. And primarily, we do that because we want to see what's shaking at first light. Wow. Hunters drool when they see this. That's so cool. <laughs> that, that really is incredible. Amazing. But if you don't put a camera out, you, your chances are zero. Right. If you do find one, the whole world's going to be happy. Yeah. And especially all Bigfoot dorks like myself <laughs> will be very happy. But you got a big heart, and that's all that matters. When it's all said and done, it's still camping. When we're tired with our tired of your regular boring regular nine existence. to five job, you want something mythical and mystical and magical to happen. You in your want life. something interesting you want to, to do. find a damn undiscovered ape. It was a very fun time squatching with Duncan and Steve and John, and I wish them well in their pursuit of the Sasquatch. And although we didn't get to meet any big feet, we did get to see that interesting teepee thing that was stacked in the middle of the woods. It might have been made by a squatch. I don't know. Check, check, check. We good? Check. Tell me when we're ready. Anytime. One of the things that you and I experienced is we went and we, we went to Mount Rainier. We went up there and we wandered through those woods and we went to uh, a bunch of different areas where people have claimed to have seen Sasquatch before. And the thing that struck me, it really is like you're stepping into another dimension. Yes. It's beautiful. And it's so rich with plant life. Yeah. When you see how dense it is and how thick it is out there, you do start entertaining the idea that there's the possibility that some extremely endangered being could be hiding out in these depths. There's something about the amount of trees that you see up there and the density of it all. And when you take that in, that's when you really start considering it. You really start going, with, hey, maybe. Sure. OK, we may be down, but we're not out. We still have one remaining piece of the puzzle, the hair and poop that I collected from Tom Powell. We sent those to Todd Disotel for analysis. Hello, Todd. Hey, Joe. Pleased to meet you. Pleasure. Disotel specializes in primate and human evolution, and he can look at this DNA data and tell us in an instant what kind of animal we're looking at. How many times has someone brought you something that was supposedly from Bigfoot. I try not to just take them in the mail. Uh, <laughs> I only do it if it's prearranged by somebody, because I would get hundreds if I just said, you know, send me your <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the evidence. Now, the most famous recent evidence is the DNA evidence. What's your take? They did some of the latest cutting edge science. They sequenced the mitochondrial genomes. They did single nucleotide polymorphism analysis, just like the forensic people. So those are real technologies and potentially real data, but they don't show any of the raw data. And so they just sort of tell their results. Their conclusions do not logically follow 
from the data and the analyses that they present. <laughs> so um, essentially, they went looking to find that Bigfoot was real. Right, and but their interpretation, just, it, it's not valid. So clunky. I've been a biological anthropologist. I got my PhD in 1992. I can't follow three quarters of that paper. I want to be polite. I, I don't want to say crazy. It's say crazy. Uh, say crazy. It's heterodox. What is heterodox? I've never heard uh, of It's that. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, we sent you some samples. We got three fecal samples from you and two hair samples from you. From one of the two hair samples and one of the three feces samples, we actually got DNA. I'm with NYU professor Todd Disotel, and the moment of truth has arrived. We're about to find out if the poop I gave him was actually Bigfoot's. We sent you some samples. We got three uh, fecal samples from you and two hair samples from you. We actually got DNA. Over here on the computer, I have the results. So look up here. This is good data. And if I copy this good, clean part of this data, and then I run it through this algorithm on the big database, it has shown up as Ursus. Ursus is the genus for bears. The closest match was to the American black bear. So bears do indeed in the woods in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> so I also have the hair sample, it's even dirtier. But right here, I got a nice little signature of clean sequence. And when I run an analysis on that, I get canis lupus, wolf, wolf coyote. coyote, and domestic dog. Todd Disotel, Bigfoot dream crusher. Is there any possibility in your mind that there could be an undiscovered primate that's that big living in some place like the Pacific Northwest? I'm a very, very strong skeptic, but this very laboratory has been involved in the discovery of a new species of monkey and two new subspecies of apes. I can't say zero. I bet it's you're just, right. That's what science is about. Well, listen, man, you cleared up a lot about the process, and you get a much better picture of what's really going on. So thank you very much for that. Much to my dismay, we found no Sasquatch. But we did have a good time wandering through the Pacific Northwest. And being up there and seeing the density of the forest, you really got a sense that nobody really knows everything that's up there. And that's one of the reasons why the whole Sasquatch idea is so intoxicating. Everybody wants to be the one person that gets that clear picture of the wild man living in the woods. Unfortunately for us, no such luck. But if you are out there, Sasquatch, well played, sir. Well played. I'll see if I can get these trees to communicate with me. Guide me to the wild man in the forest. I have an open heart. I don't feel This is not working. 